Hello, uh, welcome everyone. I'm uh, very happy uh, to welcome you to this uh, webinar uh, about empowering mobility management with big data. Uh, this webinar is promoted by uh, the uh, project Big Data Europe, and uh, we are uh, um, as Ertico, we are uh, representing the societal challenge number four on mobility, uh, where uh, we're using the Big Data Europe uh, tools uh, in order to uh, look at the societal challenge and solve uh, the problems related to the mobility. So I'll, um, Uh, we have a, a, a few uh, presentations today, uh, one on a general introduction of the Big Data Europe project, uh, where Simon Sherry uh, from Fraunhofer will, will give uh, a, a few slides. Then we will uh, look at the use case that we have uh, investigated and uh, that has implemented the Big Data solution um, in Thessaloniki uh, with Josep Maria Salanova from CERT. And then, uh, uh, just right after that, Luigi will uh, uh, give a presentation on the technologies and applications uh, that have been put into place and with uh, some live demos. We will do a few polls in this um, <clears throat> webinar and uh, uh, in order to get most uh, uh, from uh, you and uh, some in interaction. And um, I will start with the first uh, poll. But uh, before uh, that, uh, I'd just like to make sure that you understand the interface that is um, at your disposal. You have a, uh, a tab on the, on the right-hand side and with uh, some menu that, is, that can be used. Uh, um, if you have any problem with the audio or the visuals, you can modify the settings in the menu, but you can also always ask questions in the, in the uh, question tab or the chat tab. So we will uh, moderate the questions. We can interact with you during the webinar. And so uh, please don't hesitate uh, to tell us if anything is going wrong or if uh, the audio has a, has a problem, but also direct questions to the different uh, um, presenters. We will moderate these questions. And at the end of each presentation, we will uh, ask the questions to the, to the people. Uh, if you want also to know more about Big Data Europe, there is, a, of course, a website. There is also a special se uh, section on the, on the pilot transport. Uh, uh, and um, please uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, we have also a Twitter feed, uh, Big Data Europe, and also a LinkedIn group. So don't hesitate uh, to join uh, the, uh, the group. So coming back to the agenda, I'll give uh, the floor to uh, Simon Skerry, but first we'll go to the poll. So to make sure that you understand, we are we have a very simple poll question, which is um, the following. So uh, which uh, sector do you represent? And so you should see uh, on your screen uh, uh, the question, and um, I can see who has voted. I see that uh, only 6% of you have voted, so now, <laughs> okay, it increases. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see, uh, when I reach 70%, uh, I will uh, close the poll. Okay, so um, a couple of seconds more, and then I will close, close the poll, and then I will show, share with you how it looks like, and so, this was a simple question, so we have four more uh, during the, the webinar. It makes sure that we have uh, an interaction with you. So we have about a, a fifth of the public authorities. We have also research and academia, uh, representing half of the audience, transport industry and IT industry, also representing uh, a smaller portion. So uh, thank you uh, for this. I leave the floor directly to um, Simon now. Uh, Simon, I hope that you're online. I transfer uh, now you as presenter. So, and then I will hide also that one. Uh, Simon, are you, are you there? 
you have the floor. Yep. Uh, so, hello, everyone. Um, I'm just going to give a little uh, summary of the Big Data Area project because uh, I'm sure uh, at least the majority in the webinar today are familiar with the project. So, I'll just give you a little status update. Um, the Big Data Area project, uh, coordination support action, is actually um, in the last uh, phase of the project. We're now um, in the last six months. Uh, we're starting to go into the last six months. So the focus is on the last um, version of the pilots. There's one each for the seven societal challenges um, and also the uh, showcasing of these pilots um, to uh, also um, va validate the need of the big data uh, integrator platform, which we have developed. Um, so uh, the consortium, um, which you're also probably familiar with, um, today we have in this webinar um, Representatives from Fraunhofer, including myself, uh, we're coordinating, and also Artico and CERT. Um, uh, so uh, the three of us are mostly responsible for the uh, societal change for transport pilots, um, topic of today's webinar. Um, the um, other thing which I wanted to remind, so the platform, uh, the integrated platform was released uh, last uh, month in May. And this is available on GitHub, uh, open source. Uh, just a little uh, recap, so it stacks open source solution through the dockerization, so you to um, have them as Docker com um, containers. So a stack of uh, similar containers to uh, solve a problem. The integrated platform is uh, flexible, so it supports many kinds of different components, some of which um, have the same objective. Um, we have uh, on top of these components, components to important layers, to support layers, so integrated user interface, the same look and feel to configure and um, manage how they work together, and also a uh, simplification layer to um, support better the uh, variety problem. Um, and uh, why this uh, integrated platform was uh, the best or the most ideal for the seven pilots of the project. Uh, so it allows, in each case, end users to easily deploy functionality in their own system. So you can also see um, that you like, for example, the transport pilot. You have similar data, you have similar objectives. You can also uh, have, go to the GitHub, uh, obtain the um, source, and deploy an instance on your on, on your system or your um, entity system. <clears throat> uh, the modular Docker approach is, uh, of course, uh, one of the main um, advantages because it makes it easier to have your own components. If you have your own um, uh, proprietary components, even if you want to just uh, add them to the architecture, you just have to um, make sure that they can be represented as a Docker container. And that's that's. Um, uh, we have also uh, webinars about how to do this and um, uh, how tos and readmes. Um, so this also reduces the effort to keep uh, existing open source party software third-party software updated uh, because this is basically done by the community and we just need the updated containers. So all seven societal challenge pilots, pilots uh, are built on top of this architecture. Um, there's more information about the other pilots, of course, on our website. Today we focus on pilot number four. Um, but uh, here I give you a little idea about how the architecture uh, of the platform integrator instances looks like for each of the seven pilots. So today we'll focus on the societal challenge four. Um, before more information about the uh, latest uh, updates from the, this uh, pilot, uh, I'll just give you a bit more information. So um, in addition to today's webinar, which is again, um, focused on this uh, societal challenge. There's also um, other ones. So if you're interested in, for example, the energy pilot or the uh, security pilot, you can uh, have a look at our calendar and uh, make sure you don't miss the next one. But uh, in addition to the webinars and hangouts, we organize uh, routinely. We also have the workshops. And this year, we have the final round of the workshops. And this is the best place where you can um, interact and see um, also the latest pilots, um, maybe a demonstration. In addition to uh, our uh, guests, which um, uh, present uh, some um, interesting presentations from the area, from the domain, right? So uh, this is how it looks for this year. Uh, so the next three are coming up in September, including our transport um, workshop on the 14th. Um, and the last three, uh, they will also be in autumn, but the official date has not yet been announced. So please keep in tune and have a look at our website. Um, and um, 
Yeah, that's what I already said. And um, the integrated platform link is there and also the seven pilot descriptions. You can see more information um, about the other pilots there too. So thank you. That's all from my side. I hand over to uh, the next presenter. So thank you very much. Uh, we um, directly will ask uh, Josep Maria Salanova from CERT uh, to present uh, the mobility use case in Thessaloniki. Uh, I'm changing to you, and, and and then you have the floor. You should see. Yeah, great. So there we are. So welcome, uh, Yusuf Maya. Okay, thank you, Maxim. You have. So, uh, okay, so I had a few words about the mobility use case. Uh, we are. Uh, can you get a little bit closer to your microphone? Thanks. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, a few words about the mobility use case we are doing in here in Thessaloniki. So, uh, our uh, the objective of this uh, use case is to use data sets, data data sets from different sources. Uh, we are collecting uh, speed traffic flow from conventional uh, detectors, loops, and cameras. But we have two interesting uh, innovative data sets, which is floating car data. We have a fleet of 1,000 cars collecting continuously uh, speed in Thessaloniki. The cars are taxis, so they, they are circulating um, half of the day. So this is a good, a good uh, sample. And we have a network of Bluetooth detectors, so we are in some way tracking users within the network, so we can have an estimation of the travel times. So we wanted having these three totally different data sets uh, to put everything together and to have a prediction, a short-term prediction, uh, linking the different data sets and uh, for following uh, understanding the mobility patterns so we can, we can predict in short term what will happen in, in some paths of the city or in some links. So, uh, in order to do this, we are uh, using uh, neural networks, machine learning techniques, in order that we are giving all the data sets uh, for all the links in the network, and we are building different models and uh, using the neural, a neural network, and uh, we are selecting the best one, and is the one that we are using every 15 minutes for the prediction for the next uh, interval, which is a 15 minute interval. So, mainly, we have uh, these two uh, new data sets that I just mentioned. Uh, we are uh, tracking millions of uh, users, of, uh, not millions, we have millions of detections, because the users are less, within Thessaloniki in 43 locations. So we have an idea of the trajectories of the people, so we can have travel time between two consecutive locations. And we have uh, between 500 and 2,500 speed measurements per minute, depending on the time of the day. So this is the main uh, architecture or the main uh, data, data flow. Uh, we, are, we need to map, map the data from the floating car data. So once we have all the data uh, on the top of the links or of the paths, we uh, are classifying and predicting, predicting, predicting the uh, next uh, interval. This is the main idea of uh, our uh, pilot. And on the next slide, I will show you more details. Now I would like to have uh, a poll question, trying to understand if the audience is uh, using these data sets. Uh, so the question would be, what kind of data sensors do you work with? Um, so you should see on your screen um, <clears throat> the question and the possibility to uh, uh, answer. Uh, you can uh, also click on more than one, uh, if you want. And um, so I see a few people. Of course, there are some people in the audience that perhaps do not uh, just want to learn about uh, big data Europe and, and don't uh, necessarily work on it. So I see that only uh, only 40 percent has voted so far. Um, so perhaps some others uh, do feel uncomfortable with uh, with the question because they are not actively uh, looking at the census. So um, I'll stop here. Only 50 percent of uh, the audience has voted. Um, I close the poll and I share it with you. 
So, uh, <clears throat> so we had 50% of the uh, people voting, so about 15%, and uh, uh, 30. So a third are using uh, infrastructure and traffic management data. Uh, fifth uh, using uh, floating car data. Uh, the tenth uh, using mobile network data, and then uh, others uh, is 56%. Uh, so a, a big a chunk of the audience is using others. I, I suspect that this is uh, naturalistic driving studies or uh, field operational test data uh, because I can see a few names in the attendee list that is, um, that is doing so. So um, with this, I leave it uh, back to you uh, and you can comment if you want, uh, Josep Maria. Okay, thank, thank you, Maxim. Yeah, the, the question was uh, oriented to real-time data. That we can, what kind of data you are collecting in real time so you can give uh, the status of the network to the driver and to the citizens. And my second question, which is, uh, for example, in Thessaloniki, uh, we have this data because uh, we have bilateral agreements with different organizations. Uh, with the public authority the responsible of the traffic lights, we are connected and we are receiving uh, all the data that they are uh, receiving in real time from traffic flows to traffic light status for some traffic lights which are uh, up to date. Uh, we have an agreement with private companies for giving receiving this flat floating car data. So my next question uh, to the audience, the poll question is, uh, what is the source of, of this data? It's, it's, it's always interesting to see because sometimes uh, institutions are not willing to share the data or they are selling the data. So it's also important to know who is providing the data, who is the data owner and the data provider. So yes, I uh, launched the poll. Um, I'm not sure that you see it uh, yourself the, um, um, as, as, a, as a panelist. So who, who is providing you the data? And there we, um, we have um, typically either sources from public authorities, administration, road authority, so that's the first case. Uh, private companies from the transport sector, like fleet operators, the second case. Private companies from other sectors, like telco. Uh, individual users uh, using dedicated apps, for example, or, or, or that could be engaged in a field operation and test. And then other would be, um, uh, perhaps, I don't know, you, you guess. So, um, uh, perhaps also data that you uh, collect yourself. So. Um, I'm looking at the poll and then I see that, oh, more, more, a bit more has voted, not 61%, and I will close the poll so that we can go on with the presentation. And uh, I'll share it with you. Um, Josep Maria, do you see the screen or not? No, I cannot see the poll, neither the results. Okay, so, uh, sorry about that. So it's basically saying that, um, Public administration about 36%, 45% um, coming from the transport sectors like fleet operators, 18% coming from private companies other than transport sector like telcos, 18% coming from individual drivers, and then 36% others. So I'll uh, close this um, now and then I give back the floor to you. I think it's interesting to see that uh, there is a, a still a, a dominance of the public sector collecting the data, but we can see for the floating car data, we have fleets providing the data, which is uh, really interesting because this data, they are taking care of the data. Yeah, so they are making sure that the vehicle is circulating and the data is okay. So in our case, uh, this is our, our best data set because it's the, there is a private site taking care of the data because it's their, their, their daily, daily business to, to have this data for their own services. Okay, so uh, I can continue with the presentation. Uh, just uh, a few words about the, the neural network model. We are using, uh, at this stage of the pilot of the project, uh, average speed and entries per link. We are using uh, eight, 15 minutes intervals, so we are going back up to two hours. Uh, we are normalizing it to zero one in order to build uh, the neural network model. So uh, we are ending uh, to this, for example, this is an, a sample for 30 links. 
where yeah, for each link ID on the left, we have uh, the average speed for the last uh, two hours, one hour and a half, one hour and 15, and also the entries. What's interesting is that we are, uh, all, all the variables uh, can be related uh, to all the links, uh, but also to other time intervals, because this is uh, natural on the transport domain that uh, since tra traffic flow is propagating, uh, some links will uh, receive the congestion later than others. So we are trying to see this in, in a highway is quite clear. On an urban, urban region, it's not uh, as clear as it as is. But uh, we, we like to see this relation, not only uh, within the data from the same link on, on the last one hour, two hours, but maybe we can see in the nearby links, there is congestion and this congestion will be pro propagated to our link. So we are having this spatial and temporal uh, relation. Uh, sometimes the relation is not geographical. We can see some links that they are quite related, but they are on two different sides of the city. Since these links uh, uh, usually are uh, low hierarchy links, so we can have a, a fit between these two links, even if they are far, far away from each other. So uh, we are building uh, 10 models. Uh, and we're selecting the best one at its moment but if, um, for its link. We are uh, using, uh, we're training the model, we are predicting the next uh, value, and we're selecting the one with the best performance for giving the, the, the next predicted value. Here you can see, for example, for these 30 links, uh, what is the, the fitness of, of the model. Uh, for uh, this uh, time of this this date and this time of the day. Uh, so we can see that for various links, we have a very good fit. We are talking about the entries, giving speed and the, the average speed. So uh, the model is using these uh, links having a good relation. Uh, we could see a third dimension in this graph because the relation can be uh, also seen uh, in time that maybe link i is related to the speed of link i minus one on, on time interval t, t minus one. So there is a third dimension into this graph. And uh, this is the typical graph that we can see also in some time series uh, models where uh, we are providing the next uh, measurement, the next uh, speed in this case for the next interval of 15 minutes and we are plotting the predicted values and, and, and the real values. But in order to see the real errors, here you have two tables, uh, two random links, Basilis Giorgi and Egnatia 3, uh, for different intervals of uh, one day, 15 minutes. Uh, you can see the difference, in absolute value of the speed, so we are talking about uh, 0 0.5 kilometers per hour, uh, up to seven or eight kilometers per hour difference. Uh, in Egnatia, for example, uh, is one of the major uh, articles of the city, so the speed is higher, but, I, but at the same time the congestion is higher, so it's harder to, to, to model. On the right side, you can see for different intervals of uh, the day, for the whole set of links, what is the average error. So we are between five, and seven, eight kilometers per hour on average on, on all the network uh, for Thessaloniki. So now uh, we can have our four question next thing, because I will present uh, the, the output. What are we doing with this data? Okay, we are predicting uh, the speed, so, but we, what are we doing with this? So my last slides are related to the services that we are giving to the citizens or to the public authorities. So I would like to ask the fourth question, which is exactly this. Uh, what, what are you doing with the data? What are the outputs? that you are obtaining from the data you collect. So, um, yes, I, I just launched uh, the quick poll. Uh, so what is the main output of the process data? So uh, for, for you, uh, if you, or what would you like uh, if you don't do it as, as, as yourself? Um, so you can answer to more than one question, uh, more than one answer. Uh, traffic status, travel time, origin destination matrices, uh, events and accidents and, and others. Um, so, uh, and I, I see that about 30% have voted, so I give a few more seconds, uh, but also I understand that not everyone is uh, uh, is actually handling 
uh, data, so um, so it may be uh, that not everyone feels concerned about that. Uh, so um, okay, 50 percent have voted, so it's about 15 percent, and then I uh, I will close that and then show the result, uh, share the results with you. So uh, out of the answers, we have 40 percent on traffic status. 40% on travel time, then 30% on origin and destination, another 30% on events and accidents, and 60% on others. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know the others, so that would be interesting. And uh, as you see, uh, the, the total is not 100% because there was multiple answers. So, um, okay, I'll give back uh, the screen to you. Um, and if you want to comment, also I would like to encourage anyone to ask questions or comment on the on, so that we can engage with the discussion just right after uh, the presentation of Josef Maya. Okay, thank so, you, Maxim. Okay, thank you. Uh, so indeed, yes, uh, it's interesting to see that uh, this uh, high percentage of others. Uh, that is normal since, uh, for example, in Thessaloniki, uh, for some studies, for example, uh, we uh, analyzed the impact of extreme weather events using this kind of data. Since we have the taxis, uh, we can compare the traffic status or the average speed uh, depending on the weather conditions in Thessaloniki. Uh, so yes, the, 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 it's true, there are um, uh, other users, a lot of users, some of them out of the scope of transport, but this data set is, uh, it has a high quality for analyzing uh, transport and, and non-transport domain related. Uh, in Thessaloniki, we are also working on uh, building all the matrices. Uh, we are not providing this as a service, so I will not present it. But, but again, it's, 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 it's quite challenging because we have the taxis, so we have the OD for the taxi users. We have a good sample, we have 50% of the taxis. We have the Bluetooth, so we can have uh, an idea of the individual users, citizens, drivers, OD. Uh, so we are almost measuring, uh, not estimating the, the OD, but again, there is a bias on the data, so we, we should to be quite careful. So uh, go back to the presentation. <laughs> we have uh, our three main services that I will show is Traffic Thes. We are giving a representation of the traffic status using a color scale in, in the city. Traffic Paths. We are giving for different routes in Thessaloniki a travel time. So you can, if you have two possible potential routes, you can choose the faster one. And finally, uh, we are uh, supporting the local police. We started doing this. So now we have our traffic test reports because uh, the local police was using these two tools and they were uh, checking them in order to uh, send the people to, to try to make better the conditions in Thessaloniki, but uh, this was quite time consuming. So they asked us if we can have a service sending to them uh, some alerts based on, on thresholds that they will define. Like, I, I want to know that the speed in this street is lower than 20 kilometers per hour. So then I will send uh, some, some police guy to, to see what, what happens. So just uh, a few screens about the first service. You can see, you can click on any link in Thessaloniki. You will see the entries and the speed during the, the last 12 hours. Uh, we did some videos uh, showing different different events. We had uh, a heavy uh, snow uh, in uh, early January. So it was quite interesting to see how red was becoming the map. Uh, the second service is traffic paths for uh, more than 100 routes in Thessaloniki. You can see this graph with the last 12 hours, the travel time during the last 12 hours. So you can select to use this route or not. Uh, traffic reports, you can see here, uh, this is quite personalized. You can see on the left, we have the speed in, and in, uh, in the travel time, sorry, not the speed on different uh, roads. And you can see the, the threshold, which is this yellow or a red line, which is was defined by the police. So they have the calendar and they can see the number of alerts per day and they can react to, to these alerts. Uh, so finally, all this data uh, is part of our uh, open data portal that we host at SERF. So anyone can access this data. We are uh, packing the data per month. So you can have historical data 
just downloading zip files one per month, or we can have you can have access to real time data. So you, you can build your API, you can download the data, you can re replicate our services or do your own services using all this data. Uh, we are uh, not providing IDs of citizens of uh, phones of drivers since there are privacy issues. But we are uh, respecting privacy. We're giving data so anyone can build on top of this data services. So thank you for your time. And if there is any question, you can answer now or maybe at, at the end. Thank you. Um, so I'm looking at the, um, at the questions and uh, we have, uh, I would really encourage everyone uh, to ask uh, questions to, I'm trying to expand my window here. Um, okay, so um, the first uh, question that I see is uh, how, how have you trained your neural network? I guess you had access to some prior data. Or t tell us. Yeah, uh, we had two years data which is the data we used for building the models. So yes, for the training, we uh, we are uh, using this two hours interval of data, but we have this two, two full years of data for training the model. Um, I think that explains, uh, and uh, um, how have you excluded special days like uh, holidays and uh, like, uh, um, Days where there was a special event or this kind of thing. Okay. Yes, uh, the initial idea it was to to build a model for non-recurrent congestion. Uh, it was this the reason that we are uh, having a short-term prediction model. We are not taking uh, into account that today is Friday and typical Friday. This is the situation. We we are trying to not to do this. So since we are using the last two hours and we are using all the links and uh, we can use different time intervals from different links uh, and, and match them. We are trying to, to be able to to understand that maybe there is a local market, so the streets are closed or this, this kind of situation. So we are using uh, all, all the days. We are not excluding uh, non-typical days. In the past, we worked with historical data. So we built models for a typical Monday, typical Tuesday, typical Wednesday. Now we want to do something something else. Uh, something quite data driven. I want to have the data and I want to let the data to explain what will happen without knowing that it's raining and that there is a match or, or this kind of of uh, events. Great. Great. There is another question on a, um, better explaining uh, uh, what is your motivation to use um, an MLP neural network here and not uh, another machine learning um, pipeline. So, I, I, do you have anything? Uh, not, not really. Uh, I, I am. I am not responsible for uh, the, for coding everything, so I, I cannot answer to this question. Okay. Uh, we select neural network. I know that the selection of neural networks it was because from the historical data it was the one having the best. Uh, performance. Uh, we're still working on this. We will have a paper uh, by the end of July. We will send it to TRV. So in the paper, I understand that, that we will uh, answer to this question because I remember that we had different options and we selected neural networks because it was performing. But I have no, no details on, on this selection. Okay, great. And then that may be a question also to uh, to later is uh, uh, which part of the system is actually open source? Is, is everything open source in the Big Data Europe or is there some proprietary uh, codes? Mm -hmm. uh, in this project, we are collaborating with the Open Knowledge Foundation. Uh, so uh, we are giving everything open from the data, as you saw to the final codes, they will be part of, of GitHub. So everything will be open, both the data and the sources. We're using R for building the models. So we will deliver at the end of the project, open source R files with uh, our models. 
So, and then going back in time now, uh, so looking back in the mirror, uh, what was actually your main challenge to, uh, for the implementation of the Big Data Europe um, uh, framework? Okay, uh, I can answer to the, the, maybe Luigi will be more uh, uh, suitable to respond to this question because Luigi is responsible for uh, implementing everything and using the tools of the Big Data Europe project. From our side, uh, what is quite challenging is the model itself because uh, it is, it's not easy to predict uh, travel time, uh, speed, uh, especially we have a, a thousands of links, uh, so uh, the database is quite large and uh, it was quite challenging to reduce the processing time for the training and for the model. We, we wanted to keep it short so it can be in near real time, less than one, two minutes. So maybe this was the more challenge, the most challenging part to find the good balance between the, the, the long time you, we need for good results and the short time we want, we would like to have for the, for the service. Uh, maybe Luis in, the, in his presentation will show you how this it has been implemented in the project and maybe some answer to, to other challenges he, he, he faced during uh, his work. Great. Um, and, and when, so basically you mentioned all the links, etc. so there is a lot of, of modeling to do. Uh, so do you, did you get there? I mean, did you manage to get all the components working as a whole or, or, or are you, uh, is it a, a very long process? No, 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 everything works okay. We, we will finalize uh, this second pilot now, within the, this month and the next months. But for the moment, everything uh, looks okay. Yeah. Okay. So perhaps we can um, ask our uh, next uh, next presentation is, is more there uh, uh, than a live demo of the pilot, and Luigi uh, will give uh, that presentation. So we'll we'll pass. We thank first uh, Josep Maria for the, the presentation, and then we ask now Luigi to um, to show us what has happened. I give you this, the screen, Luigi. I hope that you can still hear us, and and I'll uh, I'll give you the floor. Yep, it seems to work. So, Luigi, are you muted? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope that you can see my screen. Yes, we can. I start with a short recap of the of the project, uh, just to remind uh, and, and to um, create a context for the project. Uh, so we, we started this uh, project with the uh, societal challenge uh, about the uh, transport and the idea was to implement a, a pilot using the data from CERT. So the objective is, is to uh, create a, a fault tolerant and uh, flexible, scalable platform using open source uh, framework to, to process streaming data. The um, main idea is to, is to set up uh, an architecture that, that is based on the microservices uh, where you have uh, uh, a message broker uh, where uh, different components that, that can be producer of data or consumer of data can communicate uh, through this uh, uh, message broker. The architecture of the pilot uh, uh, so was uh, built to set up, of course, a small set of the services that are already provided by CERT. Uh, so the, the idea was to use the floating car data uh, both the real-time data and the historical data. Uh, uh, processing the, the, the data, uh, for example, for the map matching, that means the uh, mapping the uh, position of the vehicles into the uh, road segment in the 
in Thessaloniki. And then uh, averaging uh, the data in a time window, for example, five minutes, uh, for the average speed and the, and the traffic flow. And then uh, presenting this data in a visualization. So we have used uh, different components for this. Uh, the message broker that we chose uh, was uh, Kafka. One producer uh, uh, takes the data from uh, or from the historical uh, database or from or from the web service, uh, makes some transformation of the data in order to to. Uh, uh, being able to communicate with the consumer that is on the other side of the of the channel I uh, uh, because uh, the, the messaging system that is Kafka works on uh, topic so different com the producer and consumer can communicate uh, through channels that are called uh, topic and of course they need to share the schema of the data And at the end, uh, in the previous we uh, webinar, we were able to set up the, 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 an application uh, with this architecture. So again, um, uh, uh, Kafka as a, as a message broker, uh, Apache Flink for the processing of the, of the data, uh, PostGIS, also is, was used for uh, storing the, the road network and um, uh, creating the, the, the MAM matching. And at the end, uh, the data was, the result of the processing uh, was stored in Elasticsearch. And then from Elasticsearch, we, we could uh, create a visualization like, like, like this one from Kibana. Now the, the purpose of this uh, of the uh, work after that uh, webinar was to uh, use the containers that have been developed in the uh, in the BD project um, Docker container and uh, create uh, services that could be uh, started. Uh, in in a in a uh, ordered way uh, through um, uh, through a common uh, user interface. So as as you can see here, the the, the purpose is to have uh, all, all the services in Docker containers uh, distributed in a in a in a uh, in a cluster. So. Uh, uh, we can uh, see which the, the user interfaces that we will see more uh, directly in the in the demo and the the, the purpose is to uh, create the uh, all, all the services to start all the services that means a pipeline uh, from the from the raw data to uh, to the Processing and result uh, can be set up in a, in a proper way with the, all the dependencies taken into account. So, for example, in our case, uh, one dependency is, is that uh, using Kafka, we need also Zookeeper, and Zookeeper must be started before uh, before Kafka. And also for other components, uh, we need a certain, uh, we, we need to follow a certain uh, order in order to start the services uh, uh, so that, that there is no uh, uh, issues or failure. I uh, will uh, change now to, to the pilot so we can see how it works directly. So I already started the, all the services. As you can see here, um, 
the, the, the services are started using uh, Docker, and in particular Docker, Docker Compose, uh, where, where uh, many services can be created. As you can see, this is the list of all the services that uh, we need uh, to uh, uh, implement uh, the uh, pipeline. For this pilot, uh, for, for this pilot, we have we, we can set up uh, as many different pilots as we as we need. Uh, for for this webinar, I have set up uh, uh, a small one that we are using for uh, testing the work uh, in uh, creating the uh, Docker the Docker um, uh, the, the Docker container. So after we start, we can see the uh, the, the uh, user interface where we, we where we have a subset of the components. From here, we can see, for example, the Flink that is our uh, processing engine uh, is 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 ready. Then we have uh, HDFS, that is uh, the storage system that we use to for this pipeline, uh, for this for this uh, webinar, to store the raw data and also the result of the of the transformation. Then we have uh, the browser. We can see, for example, here we can see the sample data that we will use. As you as you can see here is the is is the, is the same data that has been provided to us from from CERT and uh, we can start so from the from this interface as you can see here we, we, for the, for this pipeline we 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 have defined a uh, few steps. Uh, we can set up different uh, pipelines, of course, with different uh, steps, different components. So the, the first thing is to start Zookeeper. Uh, then we start Kafka. When we start Kafka, we, all, all, we also create uh, a topic where the producer and consumer uh, will be able to communicate. The producer and consumer will be uh, jobs in uh, Flink. We set up also uh, the HDFS file system. For the population, we already see this. This the we are already populated the data with a with a sample file, just to uh, make it short. Then this this step is to in, in this step we start Flink, and we will see that um, that first the producer will be started as you as you can see here it has started, and now it's the, the data have been uh, are, are taken from the from the raw data in in uh, that we saw and uh, are going to be processed by the consumer that is on the other side of the of the topic on uh, kafka so as you, as you can see this is already finished one uh, one task now uh, we should have also the uh, the consumer you can check here the state. Okay. So the the consumer has started and is running as you as you can see from the Flink uh, uh, board. And we should be able to see uh, some of the data. Uh, currently, we have the, the, the consumer has, uh, has started right now. Uh, we have uh, the time window that we use uh, currently is five minutes. 
so after five minutes the uh, flink the consumer will uh, will uh, uh, compute the aggregation for the velocity for the average speed and the traffic flow that means the number of vehicles um uh, in a in a um, road segment or in this case in a in a in a small cell uh with which we have uh, that, that we have uh, created on top of the of the area uh to 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 uh, simplify the algorithm this is uh, uh agreed on top of uh uh, Thessaloniki, where we can compute the number of vehicles that are uh, currently in a, in, a, in a time window uh, and the average speed in that in a, a, every cell in which we have divided uh, Thessaloniki. So we should be able now to see some data in uh, in the HDFS uh, browser. As you can see uh, here, uh, the consumer has created this folder on uh, HDFS. Uh, we can see some data. So this is the data that has been produced currently. As you can see, the first uh, number is the cell number. We have divided the city in a certain number of uh, cell. Uh, then we have the coordinates of the center of the cell. Then we have the number of uh, messages from that from that cell, and and the timestamp. As you can see, in different cell we have, uh, of course, uh, different uh, number of uh, vehicles. And. Um, uh, so the, the, the uh, consumer will process the data for the next uh, uh, time window, and so on. So this is this is uh, a small example of the pipeline. Uh, that is based on the uh, Docker container that uh, have been developed in the uh, in the in the BD project. And uh, now the the work is is to we are um, uh, uh, implementing uh, other pipelines uh, we have now uh, different uh, many 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 containers for uh, uh, data processing uh, using spark uh, using flink uh, data storage uh, with cassandra or elasticsearch and uh, kafka of course uh, uh, other components and now we are just creating uh, in, the, in the different pilots, uh, we are creating pipelines uh, uh, using uh, these components and, uh, and other uh, um, components uh, like the user interface that you see now and uh, the initialization framework that we use to to organize, uh, to orchestrate the services. So the uh, for for this webinar, uh, we 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 have uh, we uh, have implemented this small example, and uh, in 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 the next uh, months we will uh, uh, implement other pipelines uh, using again uh, Elasticsearch and creating uh, uh, a visualization. Or different visualization. Thank, thank you very much. Um, are we um, 
Uh, Josep Maria, you want to comment on on the the demonstration here? How uh, how was it? And I mean, for you, uh, I'm I'm not sure how was how much it how long time did it take for you to to understand the different tools and and uh, and uh, what are the efforts that are represented? Josep Maria. Yes, no, no, uh, no comments. This was 100% uh, done by Lu Luigi. Ah, okay. Yeah, so the, the, the main issue uh, was, uh, first of all, to, to uh, use the, the um, to, to create the architecture. It means uh, a first, a first uh, implementation of uh, of uh, the architecture uh, using uh, streaming data. Uh, that, okay. that, that means being, uh, being uh, able to choose the framework and uh, creating the, uh, the application for the transformation of the data. And one issue is also that, uh, for example, we, we, we use uh, uh, some algorithms uh, that have been uh, developed by CERT. Uh, this, these algorithms are uh, in uh, R, R, R scripts. And so integrating uh, the, the scripts in the, in the, with, with the other components, for example, with, with Flink, uh, has been uh, quite hard. Uh, but this is uh, a common, uh, it, it happens because there are different uh, uh, different, different developers uh, that use different tools and so we had to take into account that uh, not always uh, uh, we, we, we can choose and, uh, uh, the, 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 the same uh, programming language for example. So that is that that was uh, one issue. One other issue is certainly is to is to implement uh, all the uh, is to uh, use the frameworks uh, through the Docker containers. Uh, it's not uh, it's, it's not an easy task. Uh, it, it, it it's easy for the point of view of the DevOps because uh, when you have uh, the uh, pipeline in container uh, it's just a matter of uh, uh, it's, it's it's very easy to start uh, the pilot so the application to start the full system uh, it's, it's easy also to change one one of the component uh, but certainly you you had to know and you 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 need a team that uh, has the knowledge uh, for the frameworks and for the virtualization. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. I, I don't see any uh, further questions here. Uh, perhaps what we can do is to, to conclude, is uh, go for the last poll. Uh, it's, uh, it's more uh, last poll on uh, what is your interest uh, for the big data um, Europe integrator, and uh, so I will launch the poll to conclude the webinar. So um, the question is basically, how likely would you be to consider uh, your own BD integrator platform instance deployment? Uh, uh, of course, we are suggesting also that uh, people are. Uh, free to to ask us questions and then consult us, uh, consult uh, Fraunhofer Institute or even CERT or, or Ertico uh, to um, if they have questions, and we would really like to um, help you. I think you can uh, only select one of them, and um, here I see that uh, 53 percent have voted, so uh, I think it shows. Uh, who is actually more inclined to use data and then or who wanted to hear about what was uh, so I'll, I'll uh, close the poll here and then um, I share it to everyone and um, so some have said unlikely 20% um, so out of the 50 so that's, that's about 
um, a couple of them. Uh, but that's that's maybe by because um, uh, they are not using they are not deeply uh, involved in big data. However, the others um, seem to be uh, like uh, to they are considering uh, for existing and future needs the 44 percent and very likely uh, 11 percent. That would mean uh, one person actually. So it seems that not so many people have voted uh, to that question. So. Um, thank you very much. If there is, uh, is there any other questions from, uh, from Luigi or from um, from Josep Maria, Simon? Uh, no, not no comments. Then no. I would like to thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, thank the, to the speakers and the the, uh, uh, the audience for attending that meeting. And then uh, I also would like to invite you for the uh, workshop that will take place in uh, um, in September 14th uh, in Brussels, where which will be the last workshop related to transport uh, within the Big Data Europe uh, project. Uh, and there we will also uh, review some of the uh, progresses in terms of big data in general but uh, also uh, see what are the, the final results related to um, to the experimentation that we did uh, together with CERT. So I uh, warmly invite you to Brussels on, uh, on the 14th of September. And with this, uh, I thank you very much. And, and uh, uh, I will close this uh, call. Thank you.